Today is the second Saturday of the month, so we're going to do the macro view of what's happening in San Mateo County and Santa Clara County, single family homes and condos. And then we're gonna spend the bulk of the time on the monthly data, which is single family home in Santa Clara County only. This I'm gonna go through real quick. It's just all this stuff you've seen before. Here's the macro data. It's as of last night at 11.59, just nine hours ago. And here we go. Here's the first bit of data. This is the sold prices. This is historical because you now have to wait for escrows to close. But the fainter line is the 10 percentile price. The darker line is the median. And the very dark line is the 90 percentile. So that's what the top 10% of the homes are doing. Here is the overbid ratios, and they're basically been flat. This is what I call the frequency of overbidding. How frequently are buyers overbidding? And it's just under 50%. So that means almost half the sellers are getting more than they're asking for. And up here is what I call the magnitude of overbidding. And it's what um, sale price to list price ratio is. And it's right about 100%. Here is days of unsold inventory, which to me is a leading indicator because it shows you the supply demand balance. And you can see we've gone up the last week, which is actually a negative thing. Days of unsold inventory, the less days that there are of unsold inventory, the faster the marketplace is. You can see we've been going straight down on the blue line. And then this last week we went up a little bit. I'm not really concerned uh, working in the marketplace. What I think's happened is I think there's been a flood of new listings coming on the marketplace and it, it takes time for those listings to hit the market. Then you have to get through the first weekend because that's what the, all these new listings are basically doing is hitting the first weekend and then the offers will get accepted. So I think we're having more sellers come on the market because of more confidence in the opening up of the economy and the buyers just haven't had the opportunity yet to buy up that inventory. That is my suspicion. I don't have data to back it up. Moving on to currently available inventory without an offer. So this is what I consider to be available inventory. And it's the blue line is the data. And you can see that it's, it's been basically going up on a flat trajectory upwards. You can see that normally, because the gold line is the five-year standard, normally it dips down. I think what this is is a little shift of the calendar and I think this is either, I think most likely that's Memorial Day. And basically with shelter in place, people aren't worried about um, being able to go on the holiday for Memorial Day, so they continue to do real estate. So that's caused the inventory to spike up a little bit. But again, I think that's more nominally. You can see down here in the future, there's another decrease. That's July the 4th. I also suspect that we will probably not see that kind of decrease this year, at least not that degree. Moving on to the number of new listings in the given week. So you can see that the number of new listings that came on this week is actually a little bit down from what it was the week before, you know, and that's just some fluctuation um, that you'd have to expect to have happen. The number of new listings on a percentage basis is right here. So normally you have the gold line, the five year medians up here, you were down here on the blue line. So you're basically getting 90% of the new inventory. A couple of weeks ago, we were over 100%, but we're basically, I would say the trend looks like we're gonna be right here about 90% of the sellers, and that makes sense. Some optional sellers aren't gonna come on the market with all the extra criteria that they have to go through. Number of offers accepted. Again, the, da the data is the blue line, and you can see that continues to go up with a fairly marked increase this past week from the week before, and that's why I have confidence that with the increased number of listings, that there will be an, a number of another increase in buyers next week. Time will tell. The gold line is the five-year median. The red line is the percentage. So look at that. We're over 100%. So with that saying, and you know, granted, it's not much, but you know, we might be at 101%. But that means we have sold more homes by 1%, 1% more homes sold in the San Mateo, Santa Clara County, single family and condo townhouse market in the past week than they have based on the five year median. And I am gonna take a pause and just um, point out, I had this debate last week and I do need to follow up with the person I had it with. They're arguing that you have to look year over year, month over month, you know, monthly, year over year, quarterly, year over year. 
I see no difference between that and looking at it weekly, year over year. So I'm not comparing this week to last week and the week before. I'm comparing week 23 that we just finished to week 23 for, for the five years, which would have been 19, 18, 17, 16, and 15, and taking the median of those five years and plotting it. That's what that gold line is. And then the percentage is the ratio between the current blue line and that gold line. So the fact that we're at 100%, 101% of the five-year median on a week basis, but year over year, to me, is very significant. And look at the trend. I mean, it's just been straight up. And that's what I expect to continue to see to happen. Number of closings last week, again, the trend is up. Um, it's not as, as high. It's nowhere near 100%. But that's because there's a basically a, oh, I'd say almost at least a four week, if not closer to a five week delay in closing escrows. So if you go back up to this slide and come back five data points, one, two, three, four, five, you're down here, I think, at about 45, maybe 50%. So now you go up to the number of closings and look at that, you're at 60%. And that makes sense because some of the, uh, transactions are going through a little faster because we've cleared out the pipeline from shelter in place. Looking at the number of expired listings, they really sp uh, spiked up. Um, you know, and again, it's the blue line, but uh, based on a percentage, it's way up here at 340%. You know, I don't know what to say about that. The market is slower. There are some listings that expired. Some of these listings would have been taken six months ago, a year ago, without any shelter in place. And if the house hasn't sold, you know, people are giving up. But the number that you're talking about is back here on the blue line, and you're only talking about 30 listings. So if you're talking about 30 listings out of 2,000, even if it's up 300%, does that really matter? You know, it's an indication that something's different. But the fact that we're doing 30 listings instead of 10 listings isn't something that I'm particularly concerned about when the basis is somewhere around 2,500 data points as far as number of properties we're talking about. This is number of new cancellations. Again, you can see we're right at about 100% with, uh, with the red line being on top of the red line at 100% being the horizontal. The blue line is the data point, and you can see we're right on top of the gold standard. Withdrawn listings, there's no red line, there's no gold line, and that's because withdrawn listings are a temporary status, and once they hit their expiration date, they get reported as an expired listing, which is part of the reason why we could have more expired listings. These withdrawn listings here that are probably slightly higher than they should be, when they hit their expiration date, they'll show up at an expired listings, and we're essentially double counting them. But without the historical data, I can't come up with the five-year median. And lastly, that this is all that data thrown together on one slide. The red line is the 100% where you expect it to be, and then those are the different components. So that is San Mateo County, Santa Clara County, single-family condo townhouses in a weekly basis. Now what we're gonna do is just look at the 13 micro-markets and single-family homes. This is based on overbidding, so this is requires closed transactions. So even though this is as of May 16th, you know, it's basically 30 days earlier than that. So you could really think of this as like April 13, uh, 16th can be pretty accurate. The, the red areas are red hot, the blue are cold, the gray are balanced. So now we step through. You can see how the red has expanded and, the, and it hasn't changed much on the 30th there. Now on that particular slide, the gray sort of expanded and the red contracted. So I went backwards, see how much red there is? Coming forward, there's less red, more gray, but some of those were right on the border and wasn't much of a change. And believe it or not, there's been no change for I think it's three weeks in a row. So there's this week, that I'm called it the 12th, the 5th, and the 30th. Uh, actually, there was a change between the 30th and the 5th. So the 5th and the 12th were identical. And basically the grays expanded. I think Foster City, I think, changed from gray to red, but the Bay Cities and uh, up here in um, Daly City, that may have changed to gray. Nope, that's still red. So that gives you an idea of what's happening with overbidding, but it's delayed. Now we're gonna look at days of unsold inventory. So now we're getting into what current stuff is. So now we went back five weeks on the 9th of May, 
You can see there's a lot of gray. You can see that the blue area here is in both San Mateo County and Santa, and Santa Clara County. So you come forward one week, Santa Clara County has gone to gray. There's more red, I think, up here in Milpitas, and I think the coast also changed to red. And now you can see as we come forward, here's the end of May, here's the beginning of June, and here's this week. So, you know, the southern, uh, northern San Mateo County went from gray last week to red, and that was the biggest change. And then I think there was one that went, it looks like Redwood City went from red to gray. One of these days I'll do a, a shaded scale. So instead of just going from a seller's market to a neutral market to a buyer's market, uh, I'll do it shaded. But I have to think of how to do that and how much work that is. So now we're going to go into the different components. And I'm going to skip through some slides quickly and some I'll explain. This one I'll explain, days of unsold inventory, which again is the leading indicator. This is the three counties, red being Santa Clara, the uh, gray being San Mateo County, and the yellow being condos in Santa Clara County. So you can see basically a downward trend on days of unsold inventory. And I will point out just for those that uh, might be astute, notice that I don't have 613 on here like you'd expect to have. When I did the macro update, for some reason the x-axis didn't update, so the data is correct but we're losing basically the data that showed up today, which is the data from the 12th, because I get it on the 13th. You can't get the data until the day's over with. But I'm also missing the projected three week and one week. So that's basically the part that we're missing, which really isn't that significant. So here is the rest of the unsold inventory. Now we're moving on to a uh, available inventory. This is inventory that's currently on the market without an underlying contract. And I can talk about it with all the different micro markets here because the counties pop up because of the larger geographical area. So the red line is Santa Clara County, the yellow is San Mateo County, uh, Santa Clara County condo townhouse, and the gray line is San Mateo County. And then here is all the different micro markets. So basically inventory is going up basically in every area, which it typically does. Inventory typically peaks out right around July 19th of every year. And that's what we're really having going. It's not rapidly increasing, which is exactly what I'd expect. Some increase, but not a rapid increase. Stepping through this relatively quickly. And now we go into offers accepted in the past five weeks. And again, the trend here is up. You can see the huge drop down from shelter in place. We hit an, you know, basically an all time record low for that time of the year, somewhere around 450 to 500 homes a week. And now we're basically, we're over a thousand, which is very nice to see. And we're going up from there. And I, I misspoke, it's not one week, this is five weeks, because this is my normal uh, data. So this is instead of just looking at one week's worth of data, it's looking at all five weeks worth of data. Here is the offers accepted in the different areas. Moving on to closed transactions. Same concept, came down after shelter in place. Now this down de decrease is not as dramatic, it's not as sharp, and that's just because, you know, human nature, if I only, if I'm starting off here with 100% or maybe even 120% of what I'm used to dealing with, and now I'm getting down to 90%, 80%, 70%, I'm gonna you know, take my time and do things because I'm not got so many fire drills. And so those escrows got spread out a little bit instead of falling down. So that gives you a little bit of a U shape here where with the offers accepted, it's more of a V shape. Santa Clara County is the red, San Mateo County is the gray, and the condo townhouse market is the yellow. It is noteworthy that the condo townhouse market doesn't seem to be coming back as rapidly as the single family markets. And I think that's somewhat to be expected. Uh, the way I classify uh, single family is they're more volatile. They um, are more impacted by the season where condo townhouses sort of you know, just trot along. They both appreciate at roughly the same amounts although townhouses tend to get hit hard or get hit a little bit as interest rates decline because the HOA becomes a bigger and bigger principal amount that people could borrow. Stepping through the different components and the number of closings, now we're talking about frequency of overbidding, and here, we're, again, we'll, we'll talk about it 
in the county level. And the reason for it is right here, it's real hard to come back up and you know the red line you can pick out and you might be able to pick out San Mateo County and San uh, Condos and Townhouses, but I sure can't. So this lets you see the global what's happening, crystal clear on what the trend is. The uh, frequency of overbidding is down. It's basically level. But you know what, look at the numbers. You're basically at 50%. And I, if you go to any economy in this um, world, probably, except for Santa Clara County, and maybe Tokyo, I don't know, um, to have 50% of the sellers get more than they're asking is pretty incredible. Here, stepping through the different areas, and now we're going to be talking about the magnitude of overbidding. And just like with the frequency, we're going to talk about it at the ca uh, county level. You can see that we came down, we're flat. I think the trend is going to be back up a little bit. I don't think buyers are feeling the pressure quite yet. I think a lot of buyers are still thinking that the market's going to crash. I'm not seeing any indication of that areas. Now we're going to talk about price. This is the 10 percentile. So this is the cheapest 10 percent in each one of the different micro market areas. Again, to make it easy, we're going to talk about it at the county level. So here you have Santa Clara County on the red line. San Mateo County is more expensive. So that's the gray line. And then the condo townhouses are cheaper. And I'll just make a quick mention this one point here. Something went wrong in my data analysis, and you know I just haven't had the opportunity to go back and correct it. Stepping through the different components, now we move on to the median sold price. We are missing the condo townhouse in the um, Santa Clara market, so we'll try to pull this out. Everybody should be able to pick up the red line here because that's Santa Clara County, and I don't think, yeah, this is a slide, so I can't just go to Excel and change it. So we would expect San Mateo County to be higher and we expect it to be gray in color. So I suspect this is San Mateo County coming through right through here. And then condo townhouses, we expect it to be lower and we have to be a little careful because we have two, five, six, and 12 also in yellow. So knowing a little bit about the market, that's gonna be lower than the overall county. So in my opinion, this is two, five, six and 12 down here, and here's the condo townhouse uh, line here. So it gives you some idea. Prices basically have been flat. You know, they clearly were going up before shelter in place, and then they basically have, you know, they've come down a little bit, but nothing, anything significant. Here you can see the same trend a little bit, because this is now Santa Clara County, and I'll spend a little time to make it a little easier. You can see the trend of each line is down a little bit, but if you look at it, I don't think there's any lines that are below where they were over here. And it looks like this is not updated data. It looks like it's getting truncated. I will try to investigate. We're on the 90 percentile, so the truncation looks like it only happened on the median because again here, it's June 6th and we have data beyond that. So I don't know why it would have treated one set of data differently. Here is the 90 percentile pricing in the three different counties, um, being Santa Clara County single family, San Mateo County single family, and condo townhouse. Now, people are gonna make a hay out of it, so I, I'll comment. If you look at San Mateo County, they're 90 percentile, so the top big homes are selling for more than they were at any time this year, which is you know, more of a statistical fluke, I would tend to think. And the reason that happens is 10% of the homes is a small sample size. And when you're talking about homes in the three to four to five to $10 million range, if you get a couple more high end homes up here, they pull up. But it's not like the average, which goes way up with one $20 million sale. This is like the median, it takes properties. So this is indicating that more homes are selling at the higher end. And the median price is now, not median, the 90 percentile price in San Mateo County is now over 90%. I will step through these different areas. Now we're talking about the duration of escrow will be real quick. This is pretty meaningless. You can see one thing, which is we are down here somewhere at 25 days for San Mateo County, somewhere around 27 days for Santa Clara County. Kind of townhouses, you might say we're basically at 29 days. All of them are basically 
right at 30 days. You can see San Mateo County is trying to get down to 29 days. But it looks like they probably accomplished it again on the 13th data, which is getting truncated. Stepping through the different micro market areas. And now we're gonna talk about the last slide um, on the five week data, and that's days on the market. Normally this is a somewhat significant data point, but remember the MLS froze uh, the counter basically starting here with shelter in place. So you can see that we came down, it took a while to work through, then, and this is, would be the houses that were getting offers accepted. Then we finally got to the point where every home, 50% of the homes that were selling came on the market during shelter in place. So they were coming on the market and selling, all showing zero days on the market. And now you can see we're climbing back up a little bit. It will be interesting to see what continues to happen on here going week, a couple more weeks down the road. What I would expect it to do is start to level off at some point. You know, it may be slightly higher than these levels before shelter in place, but I wouldn't expect it to be much higher. So, you know, we're you, somewhere around 10 is where I'd expect, 10, 12, and we're still sitting here down at five. So that's why I feel pretty comfortable saying that number's gonna be going up. Here's the different micro market areas. And here is the data that we have been reviewing. This is the different micro market areas. You can see them listed over here. This is for single family homes and the different components. So you can come and get a, each one of the data points. This is as of this morning, June 13th. And depending on what you wanna call it, I call that data June 13th. For simplicity, I get the data, process the data on the 13th, but it's actually data that ended on the 12th and went back five weeks. So, you know, the 13th that it's labeled is not included in the data set, just to make it clear for everybody. This is San Mateo County's different micro market areas. This is the condo townhouses in both counties with Santa Clara County on the top and then San Mateo uh, at the bottom. And with that, we're gonna go into May data, which is shifting gears a little bit. So I'm gonna just take a break and see if anyone's got any questions that they wanna address real quick, because we still have about 20 minutes left. So does anyone have any questions before we look at May data as a whole? Under the May, I mean, yeah. in the month of May, what are these ones that doesn't have a date? They, they have the date right here. See the June 5th? Okay, how about the one? down a little further down on this slide further down this all this data in this column you read these columns vertically this is data that ended on june 5th was the last data point that i that this is when i processed the data point so that means it ended on june 4th and so the data started on may 1st 31 days in may four days in june that's how i get my five week data because my monthly data that i'm reporting as may is for the month of May, plus in the case of May, four days into June to get a five week period. And the reason I do that is there's a heavy weekly cycle and a monthly cycle. So to me, it's very important to minimize those cycles so that when you're comparing data from year over year, but basically it's every year. So this is the six, uh, 2016, this would be 13, this would be 12, but I will caution that there's three, there's two vertical line gaps here. So to the right of this gap here, those were calendar months. So from 2011 to 2001 were calendar months, May 1st through May 31st. Okay. Then in the 12th through the 18th, I was noticing there's a huge monthly cycle. So I actually converted to a 30 day month where I used five weekends and four weeks and changed the days a little bit and got cl as close as possible to the beginning of the month. Now I'm keeping it simpler because I'm doing five weeks starting on the first of the calendar month that we're reporting on going for 35 days. Okay. Does that, oh yeah. look, the, the dates are also on the bottom. Oh, okay, yeah, now I see. And, and they showed <laughs> on the bottom and not on top. Right, uh, right, right. What, you're, what you're missing on the bottom is you're missing the month. So here, yeah. here you can see the 31, so that's 531. So that would have been the end date. It would have been May 1st through May 31st, indicating the calendar month. 
Here you can see each one of them changes a little bit, and this is this would be the ending date. So I, for example, right here I ended on June 3rd, it looks like, 2015, and I would have gone back into May for 30 days. Okay. Very good question. I wouldn't have noticed the slash. This is the data monthly single family homes in Santa Clara County that we will now look at graphically, but this is it in numbers. So you can come and pick any number you want. And you know, just hitting some of the highlights real quick. Inventory, you know, you're at 1,015. Where, where were we last year? We were at 1,500, but if you look typically, you're, you're somewhere maybe around 1,200. So we have less inventory than it looks like we typically do a little bit. This is the square footage. That is clearly a little bit higher than it is for most of these years, but you know, here's 2022. As the square footage in the bathroom, bedroom count goes up, that just suggests that the um, larger, more expensive homes are taking a little bit longer to sell. Average and median days on the market is meaningless because of the freeze that we talked about. Here's your DUI. This is how fast is the market going. We're going right now at 35.8 days, and compared last year, we were at 47. So we're actually faster than last year. We are slower than most of the recent years, but you have to remember since 2012, we've been in a very strong seller's marketplace. I'll do the blue line next is the frequency of overbidding. And you can see at 48%, we're actually pretty low compared to where we are for this time of the year. But again, at 50% overbidding, I'm not too concerned about it. And the magnitude of overbidding at 100.5% is also down from where we typically are at this time of the year. So it's hard to see things graph um, in a table. Uh, those were some of the highlights. We'll now go into monthly data here. I explain a little bit what I do. Here's some critical dates for shelter in place. And here's the first graph. So here, the lighter shade is the 10 percentile price. The med middle one is the median. And then the upper one is the 90 percentile. So you, and this is in a semi-log graph. And the reason you do this is the uh, slope of the line is much cleaner, and that is your rate of appreciation. Most people don't understand it, so we'll look at the more traditional thing in an analog uh, basis. Those are pretty straight lines. Normally you get a little bit more of a bell-shaped curve. So the line, the dotted line would be April, so the line after that is May. So we do have May data on there. So now we have all three prices. So we'll do frequency first. I try to do it in alphabetical order so I don't get confused. Here you're at 48.5% of the sellers are getting more than their asking price. You can see there's a huge annual, annual cycle back here when we had normal years. Last uh, 2017 was a little weird. That was where we had that second round of appreciation in August. Then in 18 and 19, we sort of cooled off a little bit. 20 started off re uh, very strong. We had shelter in place and we came basically, I wouldn't say crashing down, but we're definitely coming down. Here's the same data. The difference between this and the previous slide, the previous slide goes back for 20 years. This slide only goes back for 10 years. The data here is exactly the same. It's just a little bit easier to see. You might be able to see the normal annual trends sort of go up and then down, up and down, up and down. Here we talked about 17 being unusual and 18 and 19 sort of being cooler. Who knows? There's very little doubt in my mind 20 was going to be a good year. So, you know, we are struggling a little bit, but we can't complain, in my opinion, about the marketplace and the volume seems to be coming back. This is a little bit of a nod at the stock market talking about the overbid ratios. I need to work on this slide. This is just looking at the ratio in a given month. What I really should be doing is doing a weighted average to see because if the market's going up in a slow month, that's not as significant as the market going up in a fast marketplace. Here's the 10 year, whoops. Here's the 20 year data. You can see we go back to 2000. Here's the 10-year data. These two lines, the fuchsia line and the yellow line, are basically median and average days on the marketplace. And again, they're meaningless right now. You can see they're down. They're down lower than they ever have. The only line that matters is the DUI here, the blue line. And you can see we're at 35.8 right now. Anything below 40 is what I consider to be a red-hot seller's marketplace. 
So you can see that last year, we were sort of in a balanced marketplace, tending towards the seller's marketplace. And I think most agents that are working in the field would have said it was actually a seller's marketplace. You know, and these are just arbitrary lines, but I'm fairly confident in it. They're not sharp lines. Like, you know, at 39, you're in a seller's market and at 41, you're in a neutral market. It's, it's a gradual scale, but you gotta draw the line somewhere to call it. And that's why people's perception was, and you know, you, during the peak of the busy season, you were into a seller's market, you know, right down here and you had sharp decreases. But overall, these were good years. And typically, and I'll, I'll go up one slide here, we spend very little time in what's a balanced marketplace. And when we spend time in there, we're tra transitioning through. So, you know, we spent a couple years in a balanced marketplace, but we were going up to a buyer's marketplace. We spent a year in a balanced marketplace, but we were coming straight through. So to bounce around here is something we basically don't do. We tend to be in a seller's marketplace more often and every once in a while we go up into a buyer's marketplace. Here is looking at a 12 month moving average. And it's of the different components. It's a little confusing. Same thing for the last 10 years. DUI is in real time. So that's the real data point. The green is the median sale price. So you, this is looking at what is my sale price for each of the last 12 months and then taking that average. And so it's actually the sale price on May 5th, which uh, June 5th, which is actually data ending on, uh, starting on May 1st coming up and ending on June 4th. And then doing that for the 12 months, that would have been uh, May data doing that for April data, and then taking the average and looking what the trend is. So you can, what it does is it smooths out the line and you can see we're coming down and you can argue that we're actually going up already. And then you have the different components. So inventory is the blue line and we're clearly going down on the blue line. And the number of offers accepted in the gold line uh, actually the red line and the number of offers in the gold line. But this is the 10 percentile price compared to the median and the 90 percentile compared to the median. Here is overbidding. The red line is going to be the current year, which is 2020. So you can see up here, the gray line was 2018. So we went from a fantastic, the best year we've ever had. Now we're down here. And when you look at that at perspective, the dotted lines are the real old lines. The real old lines are 2004 back to 1997. So basically, the current data is better than any of those years. It's worse than any of the dashed lines or, or any of the solid lines. So it's worse than any of the recent lines. So people's perception is these recent lines, the solid lines. So we're not doing so well. But historically, you know, you're almost in the middle of the pack. This is the distribution. So it shows you from five percentile to 95 percentile what set the seller's sale price to list price ratio was for each transaction that occurred during that uh, five week period of time. Here's the last uh, th 12 years, and here's the last um, 13 months. So this is just easier to show it. There's not as many. Uh, same concept, solid lines are the most recent. You can see we came uh, 18, 17, 6, 19, 20, you know, or, and maybe it makes more sense to start with the oldest and come forward. Here is the monthly. So now out of the last 13 months, if you look at this, we're better than some of the dashed lines and the ones that were better than, believe it or not, are like, that's actually hard to believe. It looks like it's better than August of 2019. So, because this brown dashed line here looks like it's August of 2019, and we're better than that. The dotted lines are going to be the older ones. So here's, you know, May, June, and Jul actually it looks like maybe May, June, July of last year. And then as the fall was down here. The early part of the spring was up here, shelter in place happened and we dropped down. So, you know, we're still doing better than we were in some of the recent months. So anyway, this is 13 months overbidding the distribution of it. Here's the data that was at the beginning of the slide and you may wanna check the numbers 
because I only remember updating one of these, and I think that the difference is going to be here on slide 104. You'll have updated number of sales down here, where if we went back, I don't think we're the, they're going to be updated. And that is it. We have three and a half minutes left for questions, so I will open it up to anyone that has a question. I noticed that on page 27. 27? Uh, pa yeah, page 27. I don't think that you put a date on that map, the heat map. I very well may not have put a date on the heat map. Yeah. Um, let me see okay. what point. It's going to be the reason. So that's going to be today's date. That would, okay. it would, I would, I would probably label that on the 12th, but it's the same date of today. What I'm doing on the heat maps is I'm actually cheating and I'm doing them late in the night on the 12th and then verifying that there's no change. And it just, it saves me about a half hour in the morning. But you're correct. This should be labeled the 12th or the 13th, depending on what you want to do. Yeah, thank you. You're more than sure. welcome. Anyone else have a question? Thanks for joining me. And, um, Join me next month. Take care, everybody.